Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, amen. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, amen. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We we'll bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name. We bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name. We bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name. We bow down before you. Come on, join me. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. One more time. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name, we bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name, we bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name, we bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name, we bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we bow down before you. We say thank you for life. We thank you for retaining your breath of life in us this morning. We thank you for waking us up. We did not wake ourselves up. We'll give you all glory and adoration. According to your word in John Chapter 6, verse 63, it says, It is the spirit that quickened, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. This morning, Father, we ask that you quicken us. We ask that you wake us up. We ask that you jack us up. We ask that you fill us with your spirit. We ask that your words that is life, that carries life, let it go through our system, permeate through our mind this morning and give us understanding of your word this morning in Jesus powerful name we pray almighty father our father and our fighter the lord of heaven every gang up of the wicked this morning to hinder us not to receive from you father let them be frustrated and according to your word in revelations 12 11 which says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death Father, we activate the blood of Jesus. I dip myself in it. I dip the environment where I am in it. I dip the environment where your children are in it. And I dip all your children who are coming online in the powerful, precious blood of Jesus. And I say, Lord of heaven, speak for us this morning. Speak 
against every mouth that is speaking against us. My Lord and my God, breathe upon your words. Let it come alive again. And my Father and my God, take all glory. And I decrease totally that you may increase. My Father and my God, with that, I declare this meeting open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. And I say good morning to you all. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm a bit constrained because of the work that I am, you know, you know, currently engaged in. But I said no, even though I haven't slept well, I will come up even though we work till very late. I said no, I am going to come up and minister unto you people unto the servants and to the saints of god unto the children of god unto the believers in christ and the followers of christ because we must do the expedient above every other thing nothing should be more important than us conversing the gospel and winning souls into the kingdom and depopulating hell and i'm glad to see all of you this morning good morning one more time good morning one more time um i know that you are not a witch i know that you're not a warlock and because you're not a witch and you're not a warlock could you take a moment to press your share button and begin to invite others to come in so they can be a partaker of this holy meal and this wonderful you know holy ghost party come on Press your share button and invite your friends, foes, and even your family because we are going to have a little cruise this morning. Thank you if you have pressed your share button to invite others. Thank you so much if you have pressed your share button to invite people that are in your contact. All you have to do is press that share button so that you can bring orders. We have to ensure that we are depopulating hell. If you're not preaching the gospel, if you're not sending messages on your platform, the best you can do is to enable others here, the preachers whom God have given the unction to function. And while we are at it, uh, I want to say I am Apostle Dr. Eukarya. I'm going to be your humble servant. And this is the online Monday morning prayer conference Instagram live that comes up every Monday, 6 a.m. to 7 am and i am glad to see you and it is tagged i shall arise and we arise every monday by the grace of god to be at the feet of god to hear what god has to say unto us this is happening every monday and it's been happening for the past three years plus online and therefore people who are asking uh who are newcomers isn't that you carrier the famous superstar actress from nigeria yes i am and i'm also an ordained pastor i've been ordained over 12 years ago 12 years ago since 20 12 more than 12 years ago and um, uh, if you want to say oh uh is she been preaching yes i've been preaching now I, I, i'm just not a local preacher i'm an international preacher i'm a conference uh, preacher i've gone to different countries for the newcomers i've gone to london i've gone to america i've gone to sweden i've gone to Norway. i've even gone to london i've gone to cameroon i've gone to togo senegal you know i've gone to ghana and i've lost count of all of us here here in Nigeria where I go to preach the gospel where you know churches invite me you know to preach at you know uh, their congregation I mean uh, to their congregation rather so I function in the apostolic I'm apostle doctor you carry I'm gonna be and for the doctor is not honorary he's an academic doctor because I have my PhD in Christian education and ministerial act of course I have my first degree I have my master's I have you know you know post you know what do you call it uh, pastoral leadership you know you know diploma in uh, you know uh, what do you call it uh, pastoral leadership you know I have got a lot of certificates Kids, you know so if I'm talking to you I'm talking to you on the platform and standing on the weight of authority so one more time I say good morning and welcome I've seen a couple of the faithful ones God bless you I think in the course of um, what the names are rolling I saw Grace Empire I saw Marsha Brown and I think I saw so many others that I may not be able to 
you know get their names because the time is flying i wanted to fly with the time today and god bless you for coming in as you're inviting others god bless you if you're a newcomer can you just please give us the thumb up sign give us a thumb up sign you know let us uh, welcome you let us appreciate you you know because um i don't take it for granted that you're here you know uh what's that your name uh, god bless you you know uh give us a thumb up sign so that we can appreciate you we can appreciate you god bless you darling grace god bless you god bless you you know just give us a thumb up sign. Let us, you know, appreciate you. All right. Cups, uh, topsy, topsy beauty touch. Oh, God bless you, darling. God bless you. God bless you for coming in. Fee, uh, feel Z. Is that feel Z that I just saw? God bless you. God bless you. Amadi, divine favor. Blessing Tracy. If that's, I got it. Bobby Babs. God bless you. And now uh, I want to, um, that's a, that's a link that I'm seeing. Little, uh, uh Little, little, little one plus, or I think that's it. God bless you. Oh my God, I love you all so much. You are just coming in online. God bless you. You are new. You are new on this place. Uh, he said you're a new, uh, 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 um, John is a new, God. I didn't get that. I didn't get that, you know, but for all of you who have come in, God bless you so much. Receive your holy keys. Mwah. God bless you for coming in. Like I said before, for the newcomers, this is the online Monday morning prayer conference. And uh, we've been on this thing, uh, you know, for the past three years plus, uh, excluding 12 years. You're watching from Toronto. I see Bobby Babs. God bless you. Toronto will bless you. The, Canada, you know, the land of Canada will bless you, will bless you, will bless you. God bless you. You say you are new, baby. God bless you. I appreciate you. I love you uh and then um, this is a place where we hear the word of god there's a place where we dissect the word of god this is the place that we hear what god has to say so that we can grow in the spirit grow our spiritual man this is not a chit chat platform this is the online monday morning prayer conference grace thank you so much grace empire thank you so much this is my daughter my spiritual daughter you know um, uh, she's welcoming all of you god bless you watching from uh, dubai oh wow that is wonderful that is wonderful dubai will honor you dubai will bless you and uh, from all of you that are watching from different countries wherever you are the country will vomit its blessings onto you you will not you know be in that place and suffer the good in that country you will eat of it and you will enjoy it in the name of jesus god bless you god bless you yes music 99 i know you've always come in god bless you thank you so so much so we have to run with the speed of time this morning and now uh, we're just going to be reading one verse uh, and uh, we're using the king james version of the bible this morning so you're watching from kenya oh oh the soul winner from kenya god bless you darling god bless you god bless you god bless you listen you you know you say you're watching from india oh my goodness that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> Wow, I am so delighted to see you all this morning. I am so, so delighted. Now, uh, we're reading from the King James Version of the Bible this morning. So, uh, we are reading from the book of Luke, chapter 6. And we're reading verse 28. Chapter 6, verse 28. And I read, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that ye meet withal it shall be measured to you again this is the word of the lord thanks be unto god luke chapter 6 verse 38 and um, the theme for today's conference is you are the mirror of what you give you are the mirror of what you give now ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters most of the time a lot of people are complaining that they are not blessed they are complaining that people are not giving things to them they are complaining that people are mean to them they are complaining that people are stingy and they are wicked to them. They have and they don't want to give. You see, we understand that life has a process. Life has a standard. Life has an order. Life follows the order in which 
it has been programmed to follow. Some time ago, uh, you all know that I am a famous actress in Nigeria. This person is not an actor, but is in the, you know, what you call the technical crew department. And I got a message from this person and the message was that, oh, I'm going to get married and um, um, I, I am praying that uh, you can also help me. Well, I got the message and of course I decided I was going to help and I did. And then um, as the Lord blessed me, I sent, you know, my little token, you know, to this person, you know, to help with the wedding. And then the person replied and said to me, oh my goodness, doctor, God will bless you. God will honor you. God will replenish your pocket. You know, he said to me, you are the first person that has sent me something for the past three months that I've been sending messages to different, you know, people that I know in the industry. And they have not been responding. No one has responded to my call. No one has responded to my messages. He said, God will bless you. God will replenish your pocket. And that left me thinking. And I was wondering, why is it that no one, you know, had reached out to send something, a token, you know, to this person to support, you know, with his wedding. And then... Now, that also took me back years ago, years ago. In Lagos, Nigeria, there was this director. There's a place in Surulere, for those of you who know Lagos very well, that know Surulere very well, right? So there's this place at Surulere where a lot of the actors and actresses, you know, the creative part of the industry, the technical crew, we all gather. So it was like sort of a meeting point there was a hotel, you know, in that place then called Winnie's Hotel. And all of us used to gather there, you know, so it was like a, you know, call point, you know, a place where people meet, you know, a reference point. If you want to have information about um, any new audition, you know, that is taking place, you know, people get, come to that place. You want to see someone, you know, that is in the, you know, uh, entertainment industry, especially the movie, you know, industry. You come to that place. You want to know about auditions, you know, you know, come to that place. You want to, you know, mingle and mix with others and get to be seen, you know, by, you know, uh, intending producers. You come around and go to that place and they will get to see you. So a couple of times, you know, I know this director. And he's been, you know, doing job. He writes, I think, and then produces and gives job. So on a couple of, you know, a couple of times, I had sat in one of the restaurants, you know, in that place where we all got a yes back. And then uh, this particular day, he saw me and, you know, shouted, oh, as the wine, that is queen, you know, the queen herself, you know. And, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm seeing you today. I said, oh, fantastic. He now said to me, I am getting married. That he would love me to attend his wedding. I looked him in the eyes. I said, wonderful. So you know of my existence. He said, yes. Now, who doesn't know you, Carrier? Everybody knows you're a superstar. And I asked him, this is not the first time I have seen you in this place. And this is not the first time I have met you in other places. And I know you have been producing and doing, you know, a lot of jobs. And I said, a lot of times I have sat in this place and you have bypassed me, crossed over me and stretched your hands and given a script to some other persons that you feel that should be in your job. And I know that some of the jobs you have been doing. I should also fit into the role, but you have never given me a job. And then he was like, oh my God, it's not like that. I said, no, sir, I just want to let you know, you are inviting me to come for your job. Is it not the money that you have given to me over time, over the years, the things you have sown into my life over the years that will ginger me to want to come for your wedding? 
You know, I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, yes, sir. You have never given me a job, so why would you invite me? Oh, now you realize I'm a superstar and you would need someone of my caliber to be at your wedding. I said, but what have you contributed to my life? And then I reminded him that he is another director. For the sake of security, I don't want to mention his name. In the movie industry, a very popular you know, director, one of the astute directors we have. This director, for every job and every script that he's been given or that is given to him to produce by the executive producers, you know, executive producers means the financiers. When he reads the script and finds that I fit into the role, there's nothing that would change his mind. He will say, no, it is your career that will play this role. Any job he knows that I fit in, he will call me for the job. And then there was this particular job years back that we did. We did a part one of the movie. I don't know if you all people, some of you have watched the movie August Meeting. You know, we did the August Meeting the very first time it came out. And when we did August Meeting the very first time, you know, it was a banger. Can you hear me? It was a banger. So much money was made, you know, from the release of that August meeting part one. And that director was the one that directed the movie. And then because he made so much money, of course, naturally now, that wrote a part two of the film. So when a movie had made so much money, naturally it's expected that you should double the fees of the people who had acted or even triple and give them much more because they gave in a lot of work and since a lot of money had come in it's expedient that you know you should also bless them you know and replenish their pockets because they gave in their best they, they brought in their a-game into the job and for those of you who watch august meeting you know that it was a blast and by the grace of god for every job that i am in is always a blast i give all glory to god so when they came to talk to us, you know, of course I gave them my fee. Other, you know, leading stars in the movie also gave the producer EP, you know, their fees. And then the producer and, you know, went back to the EP and said, no, all these stars, all these movie stars, they are charging too much money. Is it because we made so much money in the film? You know what? Let us rewrite the story and write their characters out, you know. And then they went to meet the director, this director that I'm talking about, and said, you know what? We want to re, you know, rewrite the story and write these characters out and bring in new people. This director stood his ground and said no, because it wasn't just me. It was practically all of us you know, that were in that movie. The director stood his ground and said, no, no, no. If you're taking out you know, your career, you're taking out Antingozi, you're taking out um, AGK, you're taking out this person, you're taking out this person, then why should I be in the movie? Then you might as well take me out as the director because these are the stars that made the movie to be a bomb, then I will not be part of the movie. And he stood his ground and he did not direct the movie. Of course, the producer and the EP went ahead and said to hell with all the stars, to hell with the director. And they went and rewrote August Meeting Part 2. They used other you know, people to do the movie, other actors to do the movie. The first week that the movie came out, People were looking out for the initial stars that started the movie and they didn't see us. Before you know it, that was how the movie crashed. And the EP did not make his money back in that part two. Why am I bringing the story? This director, when he now got to the time when he was wedding, he was wedding out of Lagos State all the way in Benin. And I, I, I myself in particular, he sent me, you know, an invite. I didn't even bother asking him, you know, so how are we going to come? All I said, send me the address. And I was in Benin life. I went to the wedding, of course. I supported with everything that I had, I, you know, within me at that point, you know, for this man's wedding. And even a few years later, when he had his first baby, I still went to their house and, you know, gave my widow's might to say thank you because you are a wonderful blessing in my life. Now, I want to believe that you are flowing already and you're understanding what I am saying. 
as the anchor scripture that we have read this morning says the word of god is explicit just like the word of god says in the book of you know proverbs he said the word of god is you know very wise filled with the unction it that makes the simple wise the word of god that we have read this morning is very explicit from the book of luke chapter 6 38 say give and you shall be given good measure pressed down shaking together running over that is what men will give unto you are you in a state where you say nobody is giving me anything you need to check out what do you sow do you stay and nobody ever gives you anything ask yourself what do you give to people are you saying to yourself people are mean to me people never answer me people never come to my aid people are not helping me i am dying i am suffering nobody is helping me have you helped anybody what do you do for people but in private or in public, what do you do for your family members? What do you do for, to your friends? A lot of the times, people, you know, are getting married, but they don't even have someone. They can call their chief bridesmaid a good friend that they sow into the life of this person who they have supported and been a blessing to over the years. So that the moment they call and say, my dear, I want you to be my chief bridesmaid the person starts running as a matter of fact when you've been a blessing to most of your friends the moment you have something that you're doing everybody will be rushing to be a part of what you're doing everybody will be rushing you know to support you i remember when i lost my only child years back my son's burial was like a carnival Everybody from everywhere came. I didn't tell anybody. The news was flying up and down. My house became like a museum. People that I don't even know were coming from everywhere. They were coming. They were coming. They were coming with gifts. They were bringing things. They were giving me money. Then the burial proper, um, instead of a crying, you know, affair i was busy laughing and smiling and shaking hands and hugging people that came from all walks and you know cranes nooks and cranes of life after the burial months after people were still visiting me people were still coming people were coming everywhere when i got my phd my goodness on the day of my convocation People came from everywhere. People brought goods. People brought food. Some were scrambling. I will be the one to bring the drink. I will be the one to bring the food. I will. They brought people. When you've been a blessing to the lives of people, people will be a blessing to you. Before you know it, strangers would even be a blessing to you. People you don't know will even send you messages that I want to bless you. Some time ago, there is this popular man, you know, you know, who's who lost his mother in Nigeria. Nobody knew this man. He's a business mogul. He's a billionaire. Nobody knew him prior before now. But on the ground, he has been a blessing financially to so many people, both in the entertainment industry, music wise and me, you know, movie wise and in political arena and in business you know, arena. He's been blessing people, giving things to people in every way that he can support people. He had been supporting people. When his mother died, we heard there were over 400 cows on ground. He did not buy the cows. Because when the news came out that he was burying his mother, people said, you know what? Chairman, leave that barrier. We will take over. Because people he had blessed over time, they now came and rose out like a mighty army. And everybody was, you know, competing on who's going to bring the fattest cow. 400 cows for somebody's burial. The word of God is very simple. Making wise those who are daft. 
Say, give and you shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, so shall men give unto you. Brother, sister, saints of God, servants of God, what you give is what you get. The harvest that you get comes from what you have sown over. And the greatest thing you can do is to sow into the lives of people that you know, people around you, even the ones that you don't know. So that when the day of reckoning will come, these people will come from all walks of life and they will come to support you. These people will come from every angle and they will want to give unto you. I don't even want to, you know, leave out the story of our current president. The story goes that this man, our current president here in Nigeria, that prior before now, he had blessed all kinds of people, blessing them, giving unto them. And when the time came, people came out in their quantum and said, ha, whether you like it or not, a milokon is the one that will be in power. Because... Behind the scene, behind the curtain, behind <laughs> the door, the man had been blessing people. The man had been giving. You will be saying to yourself, I don't have, I don't have. What can I give? You have something. Remember the Bible, the word of God tells us about the poor widow. When Jesus was watching those who were bringing offerings, the poor widow had just two cents. And the Bible said she gave it cheerfully. Most of the time, some people are saying, oh, that rich lady, that rich man, what do I give him? What do I give her? Every man, every woman on the earth has always been in need of something. You cannot say a big man does not need anything. Doesn't a big man use detergent? Don't a big man use a freshener? No matter how small it is. Don't a big man use Duracell battery to change you know, the batteries in their wall clocks at home? So when you go to visit that big man, don't go with the spirit of just trying to receive, to receive. Because when all that is about you is to receive, to receive, the day will come. There will be no one to give you because when they see you, all they see is that he or she is always receiving. They don't give. Because that your receiving, receiving spirit will get you and put you in trouble. Remember the Bible tells us it is greater, it is better to give than to receive. Because the hand that always gives is always on top. The hand that always receives is below and the one that gives is on top. So every time you are, give me, give me, give me, Jimmy, give me, give me, always give me, give me, give me. You are Jimmy, give me, give me. You have to learn to be a giver. You have to learn to give because as you give, it means you're sowing. When the time comes, when the harvest will be ripe, when anything happens to you, people will come, people will run from everywhere. Sometimes it may not just be money. Sometimes it may not just be material things. It can also be as you preach the gospel, just like I have been doing over the years. And I have been pouring my spirit, my soul, in depopulating hell and populating heaven, people hear the message. And from all walks of life, they call me, they say, Apostle Dr. Eukarya, can you send your account number? Let me send you something to support the work you're doing. Some people recharge my phone. They say, no, we know you're using a whole lot of data. I read, you know, all your posts and I am blessed. I need to bless you. Apart from people that I preach for, you know, who give me honorarium. Some of them will say, woman of God, can I tell you something? I go through your posts on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube. 
And when I am dry and I don't even know where to get the scriptures, all those scriptures that you keep on pumping on the social media, it helps me. I'll be looking for a scripture, but suddenly I see your post and that is the post or that is the scripture that I'm looking for. It's a woman of God. Please send me your account number. Let me, you know, send you a little blessing. So there are thousands of ways that you can be a blessing to people. And over time, people will bless you. You have heard of stories of people, you know, who are being blessed because people follow them, because people support what they are doing, because they are impacting their generation wisely. Child of God, God is saying to you today, life is not difficult. It's only difficult because you make it difficult. It's only difficult because you refuse to understand the simple processes that max the train of life. Child of God, God is saying to you this morning, the meanness and the wickedness that you've been experiencing comes from the meanness and the wickedness and greediness that you have been giving over time. Because when you are selfish, people will be selfish to you. A lot of the times, as a preacher, as an apostle that I am, when I go to churches to minister, when I call for seed, people respond. And my host pastors will always ask me, Dr. Yukira, I don't know, how do you do it? How is it that when you call for seed, people respond? I am a seed sower. I do not play with giving of my tithe. I do not play with giving of my offerings. I do not play with supporting ministries apart from my ministry. I do not play with being a blessing to other ministers of God. No matter the amount of money that is being given to me, if you give me 1,000 Naira today, I will remove 100 Naira from it and sow and give my tithe. Sometimes I give much more. I can get in accumulation of money. Record them just like I ministered unto us last week. Some people can dash me, you know, this, dash me that, and I record them. And I gather the seeds and I give. When it's time for my spiritual father's blessing, I send him blessings. Last Christmas, I sent him a Christmas package. And my father, no matter where he is around the world, he's always calling me my spiritual mentor, Bishop Dr. Chris Pakuve of our daily manner. Wherever he is, he will call me my daughter. Are you okay? I'm praying for you. So my brother, my sister, you are not receiving because you've not been giving. You are not getting because you've not been giving until you learn how to give and stop being selfish. You can never receive. The world is looking for those who will be a blessing. And if you're not a blessing, you can never get anything. Child of God, the word of God says in the book of John 14 verse 6, Jesus answering says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to my father except through me. Join me this morning and say, my father, my fighter. Truly, you are the way, the truth, and the life. I have missed my way prior before now. I do not know what I have been doing. I have been, been misled by the spirit of selfishness. I have been misled by the spirit of greed. I have been misled by the spirit of meanness. My Lord and my God, 
I ask that you fill me with your spirit. Your spirit that shows the way. My Father and my God, I repent from the spirit of selfishness. I receive, you know, you know, repent from the spirit of greediness. I repent from the spirit of meanness. Because my father, I have been selfish. And because I have been selfish, I have been mean. That is why I have not been receiving. My father and my God, I ask that you have mercy upon me. Show me mercy. I repent from henceforth. Help me, let me be a giver. Help me and feed me with your power, your grace to give. Help me, Lord of heaven. Because I know that you have said, Give and you shall be given good measure. Press down, shake it together. So shall men give unto me. And I know that as I give, people will give me and it will run over. Say that prayer. Say, My father, my fighter, from henceforth, I break the yoke of selfishness that has covered my spiritual eyes. I break the yoke of greediness that has covered my spirit. I break the yoke of meanness that has covered my mindset. Father, let my mind be renewed this morning. Thank you, Father, as I have heard your word, I will begin to function in them. Open your mouth and say, my Father, my Father, this morning, according to your word in Romans 4, verse 17c, which says, Even God, who quickened the dead, and called those things that be not as though they were. Say, my father, my fighter, this morning, Lord, I call forth blessings. I call forth money. I call for new helpers of destiny. I call for men and women who will come to carry my burden, who will help me in life. Say, my father, my fighter, everywhere where the treasures that you have apportioned for me are, I call them forth. I call them forth. I call them forth. I call them forth. I call for helpers of destiny. Those who are even dead with compassion towards me, my Lord and my God, resuscitate their compassionate spirit. Let them hear my cry. Let them answer me. Let them run to my help. My Lord and my God, those who have turned their backs, let them turn their front towards me. Let them look at me. Let them hear my cry. Let them come to my aid. Let them come to the aid of my family. Say, my father, my fighter, this morning I ask, I say every grave that has swallowed my blessings, I command those graves to vomit them. Let those graves vomit them. Let those graves vomit them let those grave for me them in the name of Jesus the word of God says in Psalm 68 verse 1 it says let God arise and let his enemies be scattered let all those that hate him let him flee before his presence Wielding my apostolic sword this morning, wielding my prophetic mantle this morning, I ask that the Lord arise on your behalf. I ask that the Lord open the gates of blessings unto you. I ask that the Lord arise for your sake. I ask that the Lord go forth this morning and touch the heart of your destiny helpers. I ask that the Lord arise for the sake of your family and break the bars of iron asunder so there will be an influence 
of money into your bank account so there will be an inflow of customers to your business so there will be promotion that will be given to you i ask that the lord arise on your behalf and cause men to bless you i ask that the lord arise and cause favor to be your portion i ask that the lord arise and do for you what you cannot do for yourself i ask the lord to arise this morning and open the treasures of darkness i ask the lord to arise this morning and give you mighty mighty witty ideas for you to be able to do great in your business and to be distinguished in your career i ask that the lord give you favor that whatever you're doing you shall be distinguished and you will be the one that they will find favor with i decree and i declare that the oil of god pour upon you and make your face to shine so that you can be separate you can be distinguished and you can be called out and be the chosen one at the creed and so shall it be in Jesus powerful name amen and amen the Bible says in the book of Revelation 3 20 Jesus speaking said behold I stand at the door if anyone hear me and opens the door I will come in you know unto him and I will sup with him the meaning of what Jesus is saying that he is knocking on the door of your mind the door of your heart he wants to come into your life he wants to make a change in your life he wants to redirect your mind he wants to redirect your thought processes he wants to redirect the way you do things the only way you can change and have your mind renewed is when you anchor and call upon jesus when you don't call upon jesus my dear my brothers and sisters you will continue to do things the way you have been doing them jesus is calling you today the ways you've been doing things that are not in the will of God, the way you have been behaving, the way you have not been thinking right, the way you have been doing things that is bringing shame to the body of Christ, the way you have been talking that has not been glorifying God, the only way you can have the power and the will to be able to change that is only when you submit your will, your mind, your body, your heart to the control of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way you can do that is to call upon him. You open your mind, you know, and you speak with your mouth because you already believe in your heart that you cannot do it by yourself. Hear me, none of us have the power to change our wicked ways, our old man that is corrupt, our old man, our sinful nature, unless we call Jesus. Unless we call him, say, Father, come and help me. You cannot do it by yourself. You know, there are certain ways you've been living. There is this, you know, immoral way you've been doing things, immoral life you've been living. You know, you cannot do it by yourself until you call on Jesus, until you begin to hang on to God, until you say, help me, Jesus. <clears throat> so you want to give your life to Jesus this morning? You want a new life because the life of a believer is a beautiful life. Most of the time, people are afraid to give their life to God. They say, oh, if I become born again, oh, will I not live well? You will live well. You will wear the best of clothes. You will dress well. You will do everything. The only thing that God does not want you to do is to live righteously. You know, it's, it's, I mean, to live unrighteously. You can't be in Christ and still be lying. You can't be in Christ and still be fornicating. You can't be in Christ and still be, you know, committing adultery. You can't still be in Christ and still be cheating. You can't be in Christ and still be extorting money. You can't be in Christ and still be gossiping. You can't be in Christ and be envious and be jealous. You can't be in Christ and be backbiting all that. You can't be, in, in, you know, in Christ and be speaking against someone so you can carry favor. You can't be in Christ and be lazy. You can't be in Christ. And do not have the spirit to be a giver. When you are in Christ, he will quicken you to be able to do things you never thought you'd be able to do. And when you are in Christ, what you never thought you couldn't do or you can't do or what people think you can't do, you will begin to do them. And the moment you are in Christ, God will enlarge you. God will put a new garment upon you. You want to give your life to Christ this morning, join me and pray the prayer of a sinner. I prayed it years ago and I still pray all the time. 
when I gave my life to God years ago, even before I got ordained years ago. Say, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning. I've heard your word this morning from your servant. Lord, I believe in my heart that you died for my sake, for my redemption. And I confess with my mouth now that Lord Jesus become my Lord and personal Savior. I renege of my old life and I take on the life of Christ. And my Father help me to be able to live righteously. That from henceforth, everyone who comes in contact with me, even from my family members, they will know of a truth that I have become a new creation indeed. And all things are passed away. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to tell you that heaven is rejoicing on your behalf right now. If you listen carefully, you can hear the drum beats beating spiritually for your sake. Because Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me here on earth, I will also be ashamed of you in heaven. Because you're not ashamed to accept our Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. He will not also be ashamed of you in heaven. And I know God will enlarge your course from henceforth. And I want to say that that is the first step. Second step, you need to start reading the word of God incisively. Consume the word of God. As a matter of fact, gulp the word of God. Because the only way there will be a renewal of your spirit and your mind is a constant consumption of the word of God. Because the more you consume the word of God, the more your spirit man will become cleansed and it will grow. Because the first thing that begins to change when you begin to gulp and begin to you know, be renewed by God and the word of God is your spoken language. You will find that you will not be saying those foul you know, things you used to say, you know, cursed languages will be, begin to diminish out of your mouth. You know, prior, before now, you know, you, you find that you used to be quick to curse people, you used to be quick to abuse people. But as the word of God begins to seep into you, you will have an understanding of that John chapter 6 verse 63, which says, The flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickened. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life you will understand that God spoke and things came into place. You will understand that when God spoke, he spoke life. God did not speak destruction. So therefore, when you now speak after you've given your life to God, you will always speak life and you will not speak curses. And you will also understand what the book of Matthew says in uh, chapter 12. You know, let me just quickly read that chapter 12, I think from verse 34. Because a lot of people always, always, you know, don't seem to understand what they are doing. Uh, uh, I could read, uh, from, yeah, from chapter 12, I take um, chapter 12 of Matthew, verse 34. I'm going to take it all the way down. It says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil, you know, man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth, you know, evil things. And look at the last verse now. You know, not the last verse, I take it down and say to 36 now. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. And look at verse 37. It says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Look at that verse 36 again. You want to write it down and read through again. It says, for every idle word that thou shalt speak, thou shalt give account of it in the day of judgment. You know, most of the time people just talk anyhow. They say things. They say, oh, you bastard. Oh, you this. They use curse words. Because they lack understanding. 
They lack understanding that they will be judged, that they will give account of everything they say. They lack, of, they lack understanding that they will be condemned by the things they say. You know that a person can be well-dressed, look so nice. The moment they open their mouth, then you can decipher the kind of person they are, whether they are illiterate, whether they are educated, whether they are spiritually minded or worldly minded or morally corrupt. The moment they open their mouth, you can decipher the kind of person they are through the things they say, through the words that they use, and through everything that they communicate with, you can decipher. So that is why the moment you consciously and continue to consume the word of God, it begins to flush out those negative things, negative words, negative thoughts, negative ways of saying things and doing things. That is why God is calling us to a change. So that when next you open your mouth, just like the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, it says, let every word you speak be seasoned with salt. When next you talk to someone, you're saying something that will be a blessing and not a curse. The next time you open your mouth, you are saying things that will give life and not bring that. That is why you should say love words, sweet words to people around you, to your workers, to your husband, to your children, to you know your, your brothers and sisters, to anyone, to even people, strangers you meet on the road, smile. So let, you know, thanksgiving, joyfulness, cheerfulness, smiling, you know, be the seed that you sow henceforth into the life of people because you understand. Because if you don't check on people, how do you expect people to check on you? If you don't consume the word of God, you will continue to be the man that is corrupt. Filled with the Adamic nature. Still filled with sin. Filled with the system of the world. The way the world talks is how you will be continuously talk. The way the world does things is how you will do things. It's not going to be automatic. But as you consciously begin to ask the Holy Spirit, help me. So that if you say a curse word, you say, God, forgive me. Oh, help me. Help me, Lord Jesus. You will begin to be filled with the Spirit. This morning. God is proud of you. So you read the word, study the word incisively, pray as often as you can, and learn to fast, wait upon the Lord. And above that, get every, you know, medium that you can, through CDs, programs, and keep hearing other men and women of God, read spiritual books, Christian books, Christian literatures, to beef up and build up your spiritual man, which means grow up your spiritual man. So you begin to flush out all those old ways of doing things. And above all, get to be a member of a physical church within your neighborhood. And don't just be a Sunday, Sunday church goer. Be regular in church. Attend all the program. Become a worker in church. Because you cannot just... Say, I am on my own. I can go. No, no, no. You need your spiritual family. And then come online here every Monday morning and be a partaker of this holy meal on this online conference, this online church that is being hosted by I, your servant, Apostle Dr. Yukari. And the more you hear the word of God, the more you grow. I believe that you have heard a word in season and you are blessed. So with that, child of God, let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for coming online. Thank you so much for being a partaker and being a part of today's conference. I believe you are blessed. Next week, by the grace of God, I will be online again to dish out the word of God. And as you go forth today, be a blessing so that people will bless you. Be a blessing. Do not say, thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Thank, I, got, I got that. I got that, you know, uh, grace. I got that, you know, blessing, uh, blessing, um, Tracy. That's it. 
you know so god bless you be a blessing don't say i don't have anything to give no matter what how small rather give out a handkerchief is a blessing a pack of detergent is a, is a blessing you know a little bottle of honey is a blessing battery to put in 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 phones or rechargeable lights is a blessing you know just be a blessing in any little way you can you know a, a pack of water is a blessing a pack of tissue is a blessing even one roll of tissue is a blessing in any way you can be a blessing buy a recharge card for someone is a blessing putting data in somebody's foot is a blessing calling on people is a blessing checking on people is a blessing give and people will give unto you as you go for today the lord will bless you the lord will keep you the lord will ensure that no harm will come upon you as you go out you will go out and you will be blessed and your coming back will be in praise it will end in praise and your coming back with bountiful blessings a decreed and so shall it be so i need to go off now i need to run and i know you need to run off to work so until next week monday be in the will of god and stay lifted up in christ keep reading the word of god and keep being a true follower of jesus and showcase